The 1979 Iranian Revolution was then and remains today an enormously complex, intricate, and mystifying 20th century political event. Along with the Iranian government changing from a monarchy, with Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi as the head, to the hands of a theocratic autocracy, with Ayatollah Khomeini as its leader, it also strained world Iranian relations, and particularly those with the United States, creating geopolitical alliances and hostilities that have lasted to this day. Before the Iranian Revolution, most Iranians were quite simply unhappy. Not only did poverty and unemployment spread through the nation, but Mohammad Reza Shah's secret police, the Savak, regularly tortured and jailed anyone who spoke out against him. This is shown by Hossein Mohammadi in a personal interview. Shah tried to control the people and they assembled a secret police named Salak and they just gathering everywhere and uh, as soon as people are speaking out against Shah, they were in jail. And you can assemble anywhere, and you can write against the Shah in a paper, and you can say anything in the radio. Uh, so that's why uh, secret police was assembled. And people uh, scared, and they didn't have a choice because uh, they thought next day their kids are going to be in jail and tortured because of the, the way the situation was so bad. And the uh, second thing was just, uh, Inflation was pretty high. People didn't have a job, and food prices was high, and uh, so that's another thing causing the uh, people uprising against Shah. This shows the upsetting life in Iran under the Shah. Furthermore, the decade before the revolution, in 1963, there's a coup, supported by the U.S. and Great Britain, which is supposed of the democratically elected leader, Mohammad Mosaddegh, after he nationalized Iran's oil. This upset the British, who before gained millions of pounds of profit each year from it, and the Americans, who pig and hold Mosaddegh into their Cold War fear of communism. Due to all these factors, not only did Iranians dislike the Shah, they also felt as if they couldn't trust him. Also before the revolution, despite increased poverty, unemployment, and disloyalty under the Shah, women's rights were better than at any previous time in Iran's history. Iran also began with rapid westernization. This was good, however, it alienated the religious Muslims who thought that their Shah was disrespecting their religion. What's more, the Shah was closely allied with the Carter administration and with Great Britain. This state of discontent was later exploited by the Muslim cleric and politician Ayatollah Khomeini, who although exiled by the Shah, sent illegal letters and recordings from France to Iranian theological students and conservative Islamists fomenting a revolt to abolish the Shah. On January 16, 1979, after more than a year of utter terror within Iran through revolts, demonstrations, and uprisings, Reza Shah and his family fled, relinquishing his title. By February 1, 1979, Ayatollah Khomeini returned to Iran and was then democratically voted into power as supreme leader, ending the revolution. By February 12, 1979, Khomeini officially took power and created the Islamic Republic of Iran, a judiciary government ruled by Islamic law, Sharia. Right after the Iranian Revolution, Reza Shah, in need of cancer treatment, turned to the United States for help. The U.S. allowed for his entrance, and then Iran responded with the U.S. hostage crisis. Here, Iranian students took over the U.S. embassy and kept the Americans within it hostage. Although Khomeini wasn't involved in the uprising, which took over the embassy, he later supported it and asked the United States to give Iran the Shah in return for the hostages. Some 60 Americans, including our fellow citizen whom you just saw bound and blindfolded, are now beginning their sixth day of captivity inside the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. 
It's Friday morning there now. America refused to comply, the Shah died, and Iran was forced to lessen their demands and eventually released its hostages more than two years later. This action on the part of Iran destroyed what was left of their goodwill with the United States government and its citizens. The biggest impact of the Iranian revolution was a major loss of human rights due to the change of government which ended the Shah's regime. In the beginning, secular, westernized Iranians believed that no government could be worse than that of the Shah. However, these Iranians soon realized the detrimental effects of their actions. Khomeini began right away repealing the laws enacted by the Shah, but also adding theocratic doctrine as written in the Quran, basically bringing a 100% reversal in the trend of secularization which the country was before experiencing. These old-fashioned and inveterate Quranic laws include institutionalizing polygamy, banning secular music, television, and alcohol, removing non-Islamic individuals from the government, and criminalizing any opposing political beliefs. Ironically, the Iranian people who hoped to gain human rights by disposing the Shah ended up with fewer rights under the Khomeini government. This loss of human rights was and continues to be the strongest and most destructive impact of the revolution. To this day, we see the effects of this restrictive government under Sharia law and its believers.